now, the case of the larcenous lark. It's late Wednesday night in New York, and in Arnie Kessler's very private gambling club on East 69th Street, tall, handsome, gray-haired George Watkins stands at the end of the dice table shaking the dice cup in his manicured hand and makes his roll. Five's your number. Righto. Once again, Watkins shakes the cup. Come on, little five. And makes his roll. Seven. Watkins smiles wryly, shrugs lightly, puts down the cup and pushes through the crowd. He finds the door to Kessler's private office open and walks in. Kessler is seated at the desk. Oh, Watkins. Sit down. Thanks. How'd it go tonight? Well, for you, fine. I'm clean. Tough luck. Oh, bound to change. Uh, how's my credit? Strain to the limit. I'm afraid I'll have to close the book on you. That's all I wanted to know. Good evening, Kessler. Uh, you're down for 35 grand, Watkins. That's a lot of groceries. I understand. I, I'm a realist, Kessler. Don't fool myself. No false pride, so I have to face the fact. The moment I'm no big shot, I'm flat. Bum investment. I'm surprised you carried me this far. Oh, you'll pay off. I'm glad you're so sure. It's my business to be sure. In that case, a uh, little more credit. Now, let's not overdo a good thing, chum. Got to draw the line somewhere, you know. You just pay that 35 and you can have all the credit you like. All right. I'll get it. You bet you will, Watkins. You bet. <laughs> Here you are. Just sign these papers and I'll run along. Uh, just a minute, Watkins. Rita, get this. How do you like this phrase? Da, da, dee, da, da, da. Uh-uh. Uh, you're right. It's corny. Uh, maybe it's better like this. Da, da, dee, da, da, da. Da. No, it was better before. Da, da, dee, Rex, please. I've, I've got to be going. Oh, okay, Watkins. Give me the papers. Here you are. Here's the pen. Okay. You know, it's funny, I had it the right way in my head, but it's gone. Dee, da, dee, da, dee. No. I tell you, if I could remember, it's terrific. All right, Rex, but look what you're doing. Signing my name. I gotta look for that. Don't you even read what you're signing? I can't be bothered. That's what I pay Watkins for, my business manager, huh, Watkins? <laughs> That's right. Now, now these checks. Right. You think you'd be interested? Interested? In whereases and double entries and capital gains, I say it's spinach and to Watkins with it. Okay, Watkins, there you are. Right, Al. Now you can get back to your work. So long, Rex. Goodbye, Mr. Long. Yeah, I'll be seeing you. Bye. you got to catch it. It's a natural, believe me. What do you know about him? Who? Watkins. Oh, great. Saved me nearly ten grand in income taxes last year. Well, if you don't even check on him, I... Rita, Rita, I know what I'm doing. I make the moolah. Watkins sees that I don't spend it faster than I make it. That's Who's all. to see he doesn't spend it? Oh, for the love of Pete, Rita. I mean it. If you expect me to marry you, you've got to have some sense of responsibility. Yeah, sure, sure. Baby, baby, there it is. I know I'd get it. You like? Not bad. Not bad. It's great. What are you doing? Call him I no good of an agent. Rex, I'm trying to tell Yeah, not now, honey, not now. Uh, Halloran, Halloran, listen, I've got a number. Even you'll be able to sell it. Who is it? Who is it? The Cole Porter of the 50s. I'm telling you, I've got something that'll make you. Rex? Who else? Look, Rex, before you get all... Now, will you up. shut up? You haven't even heard it yet. Goes with those lyrics I showed you yesterday. Now, listen. <laughs> Did you hear? Yes. Well? It's a nice tune, Rex, but you know that you No can't. buts, Halloran. This is it. How soon can you get it to Sinatra? Be reasonable, Rex. We can't... Now, look, I don't want any argument. All the time I bang out songs that sell themselves, you try to sit on them. If it wasn't for that contract, believe me, brother, you'd be out, but fair. Listen to the cornball. Where were you before I took you over? Strictly minor leagues. Now it's the big leagues and you beat them, huh? You got a nice tune. I'll do what I can Now, for look, you. shut up. I want you over here this afternoon, understand? Uh. That creep always got to give me conversation. You'd think a guy'd get some encouragement once in a while, but no, nice tune, he says. And you won't even listen. Got a yap about what? I listen, Rex. It's just that I'm worried. You have to turn everything over to Watkins? All right, look. Look, I'll take it once more, slow. Now try to dig it this time, baby, will you? When you get in the chips, you hire yourself a business manager. Everybody does it. I'm not the only Thanks one. Thanks so much for telling me. 
But everybody doesn't just sign papers and checks without even knowing what they are. All right, let's not get in a hassle about it, huh? Well, if we're going to get married... Who says we're going to get married? Red! Well, if it's going to be nag, nag, nag all the You're time... You're not serious. Maybe I am. I don't know. Well, I was only trying to be helpful. I don't... Why, you have... Why, you have... Oh, for Pete's sake. Look, baby, I got a great idea banging around in my head. I want to get it on paper. Do you have to pitch a hissy now? I'm trying, Max. I just... Now, will you cut it out? <laughs> Honey, honey, look. Doggone it, listen, will you? All right, I'll call Watkins. I'll get an appointment, see? He'll explain just how I stand financially, black and white. Get it all figured out, see? Now, will you please turn off the Niagara and let me get to work? Oh, oh, Kessler. Hello, Watkins. Mind if I come in? No, of course not. Thanks. As a matter of fact, I... I have something for you. Glad to hear it. Yes. Here you are. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five grand. Mm. Good. That leaves an even 30. It uh, may take a little time. Oh, that's all right. Just so long as you settle up before you leave town. Leave town? What makes you You think? bought a ticket for Chicago this morning. How do you know? Have you been having me followed? Let's just say I have a very sensitive Ouija board, hmm? You see, Watkins, when I have money outstanding, I like to keep in touch. That's why I don't want you going away until the account is closed. I should have expected this. Very well, Kessler, you, you've got me. No use denying, there's the ticket. I, I was leaving. As a matter of fact, I'm on a bit of a spot. Let's, let's face it, I, I'm trapped. How so? Well, I'll tell you, always was one for cards on the table. It, it's like this. That 5000 I just paid you came from Rex Elber, only Elber doesn't know it. Mm-hmm. I had counted on him for considerably more from time to time, you understand. You can't rush these things or they show up. Well? Well, Elber called a few minutes ago, wants to go over the account. I don't know what's gotten into him all of a sudden, but there it is. Have to face it. He wants an accounting, and I can't possibly explain the check I cashed. It, well, if it hadn't happened so fast... So you were going to run out. Well, what can I do? Uh, perhaps if you give me back that 5000 and I return it to Rex, he he may not press the charges. Sure. I blow five grand. If Elba decides not to play ball, you're in the soup anyhow. Well, it was a thought. I don't call that thinking. Well, what can I do? Elber isn't your only client. You have others. That's why I gave you credit. Now oh, they watch closer. Still, I i suppose over a period of time, I could raise the rest. I Take your time. I won't rush things so long as I get payments on account like this every so often. But I don't have time. That's just it. Elber wants a showdown today. Well, can't you stall him? No, not for long. If only I could keep him from asking about that check that... There must be something I can do. Not only there must be Watkins. There better be. Come in, doors open. Okay, now what can I do? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, what's the idea? <laughs> yeah? Uh, this is where Mike Waring lives, the Falcon? Yeah. You him? I'm he. Well, Halloran's my name, Vic Halloran, Rex Elber's agent. Uh, congratulations. On what? Being Elba's agent. He must be a gold mine. Golden goose, more like. Somebody killed him. Oh. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I need a detective. Heard a lot about you. Always figure anybody has a reputation, he must have something on the ball. Oh, I'll concede the point. Shall we go inside and talk business? No need. I'll only be a minute. I discovered the body, see? So I'm on the spot. Cops just put me through the ringer. Any reason you should be suspected, other than discovering the body? They suspect everybody. Oh, and well, you've got nothing to worry about. No more than anybody else. All right. It's like this, see? Who likes his agent? All the time gripes. How come you aren't doing more for me? Rex and me had words often. Loud words. Uh -huh. But he's my meal ticket. 
I'm going to knock off my own meal ticket. Oh, yes, the Golden Goose. Get out of it, will you, Waring? Okay, Halloran. Try Rita Vaughn, Warbler at the Zigzag Club. You think she did it? She's mixed up in it. How do you know? She's a dame. Rex is current. Now, believe me, in a thing like this, always include the dame in. I'll make a note of it. Dames are trouble. You can count it. Nothing but trouble. Halloran, you're speaking of the women I love. Take it from me, Waring. Nothing but trouble. <laughs> Spoken like a confirmed bachelor. Bachelor? I'm paying alimony three ways. Now get on it, Waring, will you? Mike Waring has been in Vic Halloran's employ for 20 minutes. Just long enough to get from his own place to the Zigzag Club, where Rita Vaughn has just admitted him to her dressing room. All right, Mr. Waring, now what is it? Well, there's no question about it. You're a dame. What a detective. And dames are trouble. Oh? Mm-hmm. I have it on the authority of a three-time loser. And you're looking for trouble? Rex Elba's trouble. Were you it? I was his dame. Mm-hmm. But I had nothing to do with his death. Uh-huh. So if that's all you want, you might as well run along. Who said it's all I want? I can tell you who killed Rex, if that's what you want. Well, I'd like to get around with that angel, but uh, I'm in no hurry. His business manager, George Watkins. Why do you say that? Rex had an appointment with Watkins today to check on Watkins' handling of Rex's affairs. The murder was a little too opportune to be a coincidence. All right, Rita, I'll check on it. Well, you can't check on it in here. Hey, you seem in a hurry to get rid of me. I'm on in a few minutes. I'd like to get ready. And the show must go on. You said it, Mr. Waring. Maybe you think I'm taking Rex's death too... Maybe you think it doesn't mean anything. But I... I'll get out of here, will you? Hello, is George Watkins around? Who wants to know? Mike Waring. Well, well, the parking. This is an unexpected pleasure. Uh, you must be Arnie Kessler. I must be. Can I offer you a drink? No, thanks. You uh, get around a lot. 33. How come you got around here? Could be I like roulette. Oh, you know better than the buck the house percentage, Waring? <laughs> That's no way to encourage business. Some kinds of business I can do without. So you're uh, looking for George Watkins, huh? Yeah, I understand he's a regular patron here. I wanted to confirm it. You expect an answer from me? No, I guess not. Is that all you wanted? Well, I'd like to know how Watkins was doing. Well, I didn't think you'd tell me. I'm not crazy. I start talking about my client's affairs, I'd be out of business fast. Well, in that case, I guess I'm just wasting my time around here. I'm glad you realize it. Might as well be running. Oh, no need to run, Waring. You can walk. As long as it's to the nearest exit. Hello? Hello, Watkins. This is Arnie Kessler. Yes, Kessler. What is it? Who knew that Rex Elba wanted an accounting with you today? Well, I didn't know anyone did, except you. Why? Mike Waring was just here, the Falcon. He guessed you'd been losing at the tables. Oh, dear. Relax. He's still guessing. I didn't give him anything. But if he's checking... I don't think he can prove anything. But I thought you ought to know. Yes, yes. Thanks, Kessler. But, but who could have put him on to... Of course. That girl. What girl? Rita Vaughn. Never did care for her style of singing. Maybe I can figure a way to make her change her tune. <laughs> Mr. Waring, back again, huh? Yeah, I thought I'd catch the last show. But as long as you're table hopping, uh, how about searching at mine for a while? Well, I only have a minute. I'll settle for that. All right. I've been checking on Watkins. Find out anything? Uh-huh. He likes to gamble. Oh, well, that could explain... Uh-uh. What's wrong? Speak of the devil. Hello, Mr. Watkins. Hello, Rita. Am I interrupting anything? Yes, you certainly are. But sit down, you old devil. I beg your pardon? Oh, uh, Mr. Watkins, this is Michael Waring. Waring? Oh, yes. Yes, I've heard of you. From Arnie Kessler. Why do you ask that? Why don't you answer it? 
Uh, I want to talk to Rita. <laughs> Get in line. I was here first. I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint both of you. Time for my number. See you later. Has Rita been talking about me wearing? Has Rita? I intend to. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here she is. The little lady you've all been waiting for to play and sing for you. Rita Vaughn. <laughs> that I hope will be a treat for you. It's a brand new number that I wrote myself. And here it is for the first time anywhere. I hope you like it. I wonder why she didn't come back to the table, Waring. She said she... something scared her. Didn't you see her face when she left the floor, Watkins? No, I didn't notice. That's why I wanted to get back here to the dressing room. Don't there it is. Hey, somebody's in there. Yeah. Look out, Watkins. Let's see if this door's unlocked. Yeah, it is. Mr. Waring. Yes, Rita. Come to take you in my arms. No, let's go. Not while you're waving shooting irons. All right, Waring. She missed. Yeah, so I see, Halloran. But let's not give her another shot at you. What are you doing here, anyway? Telling her off. She's a crook. He hit me. That's why I grabbed the gun. It was self-defense. She's a crook. A grave robber. Did you hit her? We were arguing. Did you hit her? What difference did you hit a Halloran? Well, maybe I did. And the gun play really was self-defense. I told you. Uh-huh, but I want Halloran to tell me. Well, yes, it was. All right. Then I can let her go. As much as I enjoy holding you in my arms, Rita, I like it under different circumstances. Now, what went on in here? Well, when I heard her singing that song, Did I... you hear? I didn't see you in the club. I was over at the side, near the door. All right, you heard the song. Yeah. She said it was her song. She made it up. I did. Rex called me this morning. All hopped up. Here's a new number. Plays it for me over the phone. It's this very song, Waring. This very song. I played it for Rex. That's where he got it. He said it was his. We were going to publish it under his name. We thought it would be more popular. Look, I know Rex's style. You can't I know me. his style, too. I was influenced by it, I admit that. But I wrote that song. That's a lie. Well, even if it is, Halloran, is that any call to slug the girl? Or did you just toss that in because you don't like Dane? I couldn't help blowing my lid, Waring. I'm, I'm sorry, but this crooked Dane... All right, here. all right. Hold it. Rita, you say you made up this song? Yes. When? This morning. Rex was working on a tune. It was something like this one, but not the same. Watkins, you were there. You remember. Yes. Well, then Watkins left, and Rex and I were talking, and all of a sudden it came to me. And you played it for Rex? Yes. And he played it for Halloran? Yes, and he told me that... I know what he told you. Did you play it for anyone else, Rita, until tonight? No. And it's just your word against Halloran? Well, yes, but I... I don't know what you hope to prove, Waring. Each one will stick to his own story. Oh, I think I'll prove plenty, Watkins. What? Who killed Rex Elber? You what? I've proved who killed Rex Elber. Maybe that isn't as important as who wrote the music, but it should determine who's going to have to face it. Who, Waring? Well, considering that Watkins is in deep to Kessler... Where'd you get that idea? Maybe from Kessler himself. You couldn't. Why not? Because I... Because I don't owe him. That's not what Kessler told me, Watkins. He didn't tell you anything. What makes you so sure? He told me he didn't. And there must be something he could... Yeah. Read up. Look out! Oh, oh, don't... Too late, Waring. <laughs> I've got the gun from her. Now, what good do you think it's going to do you? Well, there's one sure thing. Won't do you any good if you make a move. So stay where you are, all of you. I'm getting out of here. Fifteen minutes have passed since George Watkins grabbed Rita's gun and beat a hasty retreat from the zigzag club. Mike has used that time to hurry to Arnie Kessler's apartment, where Kessler's thug Rocky has just ushered him in. Here he is, Mr. Kessler. Yeah. All right, Waring. What is it this time? Well, I put you on kind of a spot, Kessler. I figured I ought to tell you. What kind of a spot? I told George Watkins you tipped me about his owing you. He grabbed a gun and cleared out. I thought he might come here. Thanks for the warning. I can take care of myself. Yeah, sure. Still, I thought you ought to know. All right. But, uh, how come he fell for your bluff? Oh, I guess he's out of his element. I imagine that until today, except for weakness for gambling, Watkins stuck pretty close to the straight and narrow. Yeah. And since he really is in hock to you... Is he? ...his running out ought to clinch it. How do I know he ran out? Just because you say so? <laughs> well, I see you're not as green as Watkins. Disappointed? No, I expected it. Well, that could be the answer to if I'm bluffing. Yeah. Araki. Okay, Mr. Kessler. And just in case Waring isn't bluffing you, that's Watkins. Check him for artillery. Right. I want to see Kessler. Sure. Turn around. 
Why? So far, you're right, Waring. It's Watkins. And when you get to know me better, Kessler, you'll never doubt me. Oh, Brad. All right, Mr. Kessler, here he is. And here's his heater. Waring. Hello, Watkins. I've been expecting you. I should have known. You are on his side, That's Kessler. what he wants you to think. But if you shut up and let me do the talking... Well, certainly, certainly. Uh, might as well face it. I, I bungled again. Played right into his hand. Maybe, but now we have him on our home ground. Oh, please, Kessler, no violence. That's not what I had in mind. At least for now. As long as we're both here together, he can't play one off against the other like he's been doing. No, that's not necessary. I've proved my point. I wouldn't say so. You rattled Watkins. He lost his head. And came running to you. Why? To check on what you told him. He thought I might have lied about him. You mean he wanted to see if you told the truth about him? <laughs> it's no use, Kessler. I know he's in hock to you. Now that I know who the murderer is, it's the only thing that makes sense. Oh, you know that? To? Yeah, sure. Waring, I know how it looks. Out of the talking, Watkins. Are you, uh, suggesting that Watkins killed Elba, Waring? No, I haven't said that. But I thought... You he... shouldn't jump to conclusions, Watkins. Well, but then it... I, I don't understand. Unless you think I'm the murderer, what difference does it make if I owe Kessler money? My relation with him doesn't affect anyone else. It affects Kessler. And... But surely you can't think he killed Rex. Why, why, they didn't even know each other. I know they didn't. Well, then... Now, wait. Elba demanded an accounting with you today, didn't he, Watkins? Never mind, don't answer, but you know he did. And you've been juggling the account to pay off, Kessler, so you got panicked. Well, oh, shut what? up, Watkins. Yes. All right, you told Kessler about the spot you were in. You paid off part of what you owed him, but there was still a heavy balance. Now, if Elba sent you to jail, Kessler would never get his balance. So he killed Elba to protect his investment in you. So that's it. How many times do I have to tell you to shut up, Watkins? Oh, I'm the one you have to shut up, Kessler. But before you decide on the rough play you so thoughtfully postponed before, you ought to know the police know I came up here. Yeah? You think I'd have stuck my neck out like this otherwise? Let's face it, Kessler, the jig is up. One thing I don't understand, Waring. What's that, Halloran? You said my argument with Rita about the song is what tipped you to the murderer. Yes, it did. But if Kessler's the murderer, he had nothing to do with the song. That's just the point. What? He didn't know of it. Had nothing to do with it. Then how now, could he... Now, look, look, Halloran. Regardless of who really wrote the song, either way, we know that until last night, only you and Rita and Elba had ever heard the song, right? Yes. But when I was at Kessler's before Rita played it at the club, Kessler was humming the song. He was? He was. So I knew he must have been at Elber's. Remember Elber was at the piano when he was murdered? He must have been playing the tune when Kessler killed him. I see. Uh -huh. So that takes care of the murder. Now everything is settled except who really wrote the song. Oh, oh that, that's settled too. Oh, it is? Yeah, yes, I was wrong. Rita wrote it all right. We had a long talk and she convinced me. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, quite a dame, Waring. Quite a dame. <laughs> but you didn't like dames. Who, me? Oh, all I said was, anybody who falls for a dame must be nuts. Uh-huh. Well, Waring, shake hands with Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs>